Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's the start of the summer here in the UK and there's so much to see out in the garden. Your flowers and crops will be growing at their quickest and lots of wildlife should be having a good look around for food and safety. The chill of spring is behind us and because the days are longer we can spend much more time outside. In this video I'm going to show you what can be done in the garden in the month of June. Sowing in June comes in two forms. Firstly, the large seeds can go straight into the ground. These would be beans and peas, such as runner beans, French beans, broad beans, which can also be harvested now if you sowed them early in the year, peas and sweet corn. You've also got courgettes, squash, marrows and pumpkin, which can also go straight in the ground. Be careful with these though, as they're prime eating for slugs and snails. Consider protecting them or planting more than you need. Second is getting prepared for the autumn and the winter. Sow some kale, swede, cabbage, brussels sprouts and broccoli, so you have something to look after and to eat over the colder months. You can also get some quick crops going too, like lettuce and turnips, sown between the larger crops. It's getting hot, so make sure you stay on top of watering, especially the seedlings in pots or trays. These can be damp in the morning and bone dry by the evening, which will mean a weaker plant with fewer fruits. Get yourself a moisture tester and carry it around with you. The trick with watering is not little and often, but lots and not so often. It's not easy to drown a plant which is in a pot with drainage holes if you water in this way so don't worry too much. Speaking of water, be on the lookout for slugs and snails which will love everything being watered. They'll come out of hiding on rainy days, so put on a raincoat and get collecting. Alternatively, grab a torch when the sun goes down and hunt for them then. I found around four handfuls the other day, which were all thrown over the fence. Beer traps work brilliantly if you can keep on top of emptying them every few days. Birds will be having a dig around on wet days too, trying to find the worms coming up to the surface. Try putting up something that moves in the wind, which will scare them away, at least for a while. Aphids are out in full force too. Hose them off your plants with a jet of water, or mix yourself up a garlic spray which will kill them off quickly. Do try to stay on top of this as they'll quickly suck the life out of your seedlings if given the chance. Your overwintered garlic and shallots will be growing their scapes this month. The seed pods will take energy away from developing a tasty bulb, so cut or pinch these off while they're small and throw them away. Your fruit tree branches will be heavy with developing fruit. Consider supporting them so the tree isn't damaged. The same goes for your beans and rambling fruits. Tie these up to make the best use of space. Many of your plants and crops will be growing this month, and adding a liquid feed while they're watered will give them a real boost. I use this attachment which has a liquid reservoir underneath. I fill it with either a shop-bought concentrated feed, or my own collected liquid tea from the composter. If you do this once a week you'll see a difference. Continue to deadhead your flowers and it will keep the plant neat and may encourage new blooms. Keep your pond clear of weeds, it doesn't take long for a thick mat to develop. Fish this out with a stick and let it drain by the side to give any critters a chance to get back into the water. The cause of algae in pondweed is usually fallen debris breaking down in the water. By keeping the pond clear, you encourage more life so it can look after itself in time. If you have rabbits or guinea pigs, let them cut the grass for you and collect up their droppings for use around your plants. If you sowed onions at the end of last year to grow them over the winter, they may be ready to pull out the ground. I usually harvest my overwintered onions early, so I can clear the space of some new crops which will start to need the space around now. 
twist them out the ground and place them somewhere in the sun for a week to dry them ready to store. You don't need to cut the tops off right away. All that energy will be sucked back into the bulb and it will die back over the week. Your peas and broad beans should be ready too. Twist them off the vine when they're the size you want. With broad beans, the ones closest to the bottom are the oldest pods and you'll harvest up the plant over time. You may be lucky and have some strawberries to harvest. Harvest when the fruit is red and ripe to encourage the plant to develop new flowers. Continue to move seedlings into larger pots when they've outgrown their current home and only put them in the ground when they're strong enough to not be damaged by the pests or weather. And that's a quick look at some of the tasks and pleasures awaiting you in the garden in June. I've added some links in the description for useful sources and further information on the types of crops you can sow this month. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to get involved, a link is down in the description. If you have any questions about gardening this month, pop them in the comments and the community will help if it can. Thank you all, have a great June, and happy growing!